Hello, this is a recap for Wednesday, September 2nd for AP Environmental Science. So we started off today with a learning check. So make sure you get that done. If you were not here for the learning check, please send me a message on Remind or email um, or schedule an office hours appointment with me so that we can find a time to do the learning check. Cool. Um, the last two things that we did in class were a like lecture and interactive thing on range of tolerance. And then we looked at some articles. And then the second thing I did was explain our design and ecosystem project here. So let me go through really quickly some of the key ideas for the range of tolerance lecture that we did. So range of tolerance, AKA ecological tolerance. We talked about what it is, how populations basically need certain things to be able to survive. Um, and we can graph these into what is the optimum range of where they survive, the zones of stress, and then the zones of intolerance where they cannot survive at all. Um, and we talked about how this is called, caused by limiting factors like temperature, water, availability, um, oxygen, salinity, light, food, and nutrients. And then we did some interactive questions. I asked you all, what were some of the limiting factors that you think plants experience in soil? And the answer to that is nutrients. Things like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. This is also the reason why we use fertilizers. Um, fertilizers contain all of these nutrients and we add these nutrients into the soil when there are not enough. But they can also cause a whole host of problems. We talked about the limiting factors potentially in an open ocean and we said there's a lot of water um, but the thing that's kind of lacking is usually nutrients and dissolved oxygen because there's not a lot of plants around to perform photosynthesis and not a lot of uh, phytoplankton in comparison to like the whole open ocean, lots of water space. Um, so we talked about this is why plants are important for the dissolved oxygen and bacteria are important, especially for things like uh, converting nitrogen properly. Great. And then we talked about this in the context of biomes. So we put it together with what we've been learning about with ecosystems and biomes and how in a desert, we probably think of water availability being the limiting factor. And this is why plants and animals have adaptations for lower water amounts. Um, and then in the tropical rainforest, we talked about things like nutrient availability in the soil because rainforest soil is super poor in nutrients. Um, we talked about potentially sun being a limiting factor, especially for the plants that are on the forest floor, um, and potentially space being another as well. We also talked about um, range of tolerance and how that deals with all of this, and we connected it to an organism's needs, right, and their ability to survive based on getting their needs met. Some are high maintenance, some are low maintenance, just like humans. And we have these. Uh, two types of species. We clump them into generalists, which have a wide range of tolerance, and specialists, which have a narrow range of tolerance. Then we took a look at this example of um, these two fish, and we decided on graph one, the black striped top minnow having a wider range of tolerance can deal with lots of um, different environmental conditions, potentially considered more of a generalist, right? And then on the flip side, the narrower curve means a narrower range of tolerance and more likely a specialist in some regard. Then we talked about tardigrades, aka water bears who are super cool. Um, if they're in this like ton state, they have a huge range in which they can live in, in terms of temperature, pressure, um, amount of different types of gases, all of that. So super cool, highly recommend that you check it out. Then we did a little brainstorming and thought about what a human's range of tolerance might be in terms of temperature. And so we talked about uh, the temperature around us, the environment, and how uh, humans as a population, not as an individual person, but humans as a population have an optimum range, like where are we most comfortable in temperature wise? Where is our zone of stress, both in cold and in hot weather, and then um, where is our zone of intolerance? Like where can we not handle um, it in terms of temperatures? 
And then lastly, I had you take a look at these two articles about coral reefs and then also about species range. Um, and I had you take some notes just super quickly on some of the case studies that you found. So when I say case study, I just mean example that show what we're talking about. So a lot of you read stuff about coral bleaching, um, about temperature rising, climate change. A lot of you read things about um, mosquito ranges changing, um, how blue whales have a very large range. They called it a cosmopolitan range. So go ahead and make sure you read these articles. You can either click on the, the links here or you can go back to Google Classroom and they're linked right there. Cool. And then lastly, we talked about the design and ecosystem project. So I'm going to make a whole other video on this project uh, to go over the rubric, but I'll give you a quick rundown of what the project is now. So this is due next week on Thursday. Um, this, so you have over a week to work on this, and this is the final project for unit one and two. So this is in place of a test. So that means you have to show me everything that you've learned as much as you can in this project, uh, which is why it's, it's kind of a bigger project. Okay, so the overall goal of this project is to show me what you know about ecosystems, um, the biological organisms, trophic levels, um, climatograms, uh, adaptations, and also generally like disturbances and how they can uh, recover from those types of things. So uh, it's split up into three parts. The first task is your ecosystem and biodiversity visual. This is worth 50 points, so half of your project. You need to decide on an ecosystem project and it should be any anything. It can be uh, imaginary, fantasy, or based off of, I don't know, your favorite book or movie show or something like that. And the only thing that I ask is that it is not a real biome because I don't want you to copy the same organisms and the same biome characteristics. So a made up biome, it can be um, based off of something that's real, but it should not be real. And then your biological community of organisms should have um, five and they're each going to be from a different trophic level. So one will be a producer, one might be a primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and then a decomposer. So you would have at least five organisms, but of course you can make more. Um, and again, these can be imaginary as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to create that visual either by drawing it or painting it or making it on the computer, however you want to. And then you're going to basically draw a background of your ecosystem. And then in the center, you can have your food web and you can show your organisms drawn with your food web. And then off to the side, you can have uh, a climatogram. So I want you to draw your climatogram to show your ecosystem's uh, climate, temperature, precipitation. The second part of this project is the Flipgrid presentation worth 25 points. And you're going to basically record a video of yourself explaining your project. So I want you to talk about the abiotic and biotic parts of your ecosystem. I want you to talk about the adaptations that organisms have based on your ecosystem. Um, which ones are generalists, which ones are specialists, where do they belong in terms of the trophic levels, and how does your food web interact? Is there competition? Is there predation? What's going on? Um, so that should be in about a 10 minute video or so on Flipgrid. And then finally, the third thing is called the Environmental Impact Report, or EIR. Uh, this is worth 25 points as well, and it's going to be about three paragraphs or so. So the first part, I want you to describe a disturbance, which is like um, a, a natural disaster, maybe like a fire or a flood or a tsunami or an earthquake, whatever you'd like, or it can be human caused. So it can be that humans are cutting down a particular resource. It can be that they are um, extracting something. Uh, they could be waging a war and your ecosystem is just caught in the middle of it, right? So whatever you'd like, you're going to describe it. And then afterward, you're going to describe the effects of that disturbance. So you're going to tell me how does that thing impact both the living and non-living parts of your ecosystem? 
And then you're going to spend a little bit of time discussing that. And then finally, the last paragraph is going to be uh, describing how might you help resolve this issue? Like, how could you help the ecosystem uh, recover from it? How could you help the ecosystem? Or like, what does the ecosystem need, basically, in order to recover in a better fashion, aka a mitigation idea? And then they'll give you a rationale. So, here, I've given you a suggested timeline because it's a huge project and I decided that it might be good to chunk it up. So on Wednesday, I think you should, aka today, brainstorm your ideas for your ecosystem and biodiversity, maybe sketch them out. Thursday, start drawing your ecosystem and food web. Friday, finish drawing it. Um, you can take the weekend too, add in your color, add in whatever other things that you want to. Um, starting next week on Monday, you might draw your climatogram and then draft your Flipgrid presentation. Now that you have all of your stuff, you can start writing about it. Um, and then Tuesday, you can like practice your Flipgrid and then film it, right? And then finally, Wednesday and Thursday is left for working on the environmental impact report, those three paragraphs. And you can draft it and then Thursday, make your final touches and, and whatnot. So I know I won't be seeing you all until really Wednesday, which means I'm going to be asking for some check-ins probably online or on Remind to see how things are going with your project. Lastly, like I said, I'm going to be making a separate video, but here is the rubric. This is the exact rubric that I'm going to be using to grade your stuff, so make sure you read it super carefully. You should all be aiming for this column right here that says exceed standards, so read especially this column here. Um, and I split it up into the different parts. So here's the Flipgrid presentation, here's the EIR, and then above was the, the visual. So please take a look at this. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Office hours is a great time to stop by and um, run your ideas by me. All right, awesome. Good luck.